So tonight, I'm actually going to be teaching you something very, very surprising. With the Disney woke movement pushing forward, this is what I believe, which might be surprising and shocking to some of you. In spite of the innocence and the beauty behind Disney and the movies and the classics that you and I grew up with, there's a lot of evil behind it, and I believe Disney is one of the most perfect tools for our next generation where I can go as far as to say, you will worship the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Now you might go, where did you get that from? How are you going to prove that? I'm going to show you, the devil is very subtle. But with Disney conditioning, the devil is going to use that in the tribulation where you will worship the Antichrist and even get the mark of the beast. Now, that sounds really, really extreme, obviously, but carry on this journey with me, all right, and don't leave like a typical online or watching, and then, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop. No, 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 no. Study your Bible. We're gonna go to verse after verse, and I'm gonna give a lot of documented evidence, and the most important thing, I'm gonna try not to go over time tonight, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to give you a lot of stuff. Follow in that uh, logic, and also, more importantly, the Bible with me, and you will see how the devil is truly a mastermind. Now, I also don't want people to get the misunderstanding by the end of this video that I'm not saying that you're not right with God, that you're sinning if you watch a Disney movie and your little five-year-old wears a Mickey Mouse ear, and if you go to Disneyland, that you're going to hell, okay? So obviously, I don't mean that kind of extreme. Uh, however, the thing to understand is this, is that I want you to at least be wary of Disney. Okay, I'm not telling you to, that you are a sinner and that you sinned and you're not right with God if you have some Disney stuff. But what I'm saying is at least you, have, you should have a wariness. It's like it's not a sin for us to use a dollar bill because you need to. Otherwise, you know, you can't pay for things. But you need to be wary that behind the dollar bill there is something evil behind it that the devil is using to condition to prepare uh, the New World Order system in the tribulation. So it's important to understand that. The same thing with Disney. Alright? Now, I'm going to show you a lot of stuff. The first thing to understand, you'll notice three categories here. Now, Satan worship, we'll see that plainly from the Bible. Plain as day from the Bible. It is absolutely clear. And you're going to agree with me on that, and history even proves it as well, but more importantly, the Bible. We've seen that throughout the Old Testament, okay? And then I want you to see the comparison with Disney. Disney, notice there's a boundary line. It is not Satan worship, okay? No, you're not sacrificing to Satan if you ride a, a, if you go on Space Mountain, all right, in Disneyland, all right? So I'm not saying that, okay? But... There is a distinction separation from the two, but I want you to see how this side is innocent. See, for now. But over here, it's clear that it's Satan worship. And then I'm going to show you an interesting bridge, the genius thing that Satan did that you wouldn't believe. There is something that causes Disney to make the next, next generation worship the Antichrist. And that answer, you got to hold and keep watching this video and then... Hold on to the teaching, and then you'll see it. It's genius, and you would be surprised. And it's not witches, and it's not masons, all right? There's a lot of it you can find with Disney, but that's not what's going to cause Antichrist worship. You're going to be very shocked who is the group, all right? All right, now the first thing concerning about Disney, which is very plain as day. There's a title of the article from Complex, and the title is A History of Weird Sexual Innuendo in Children's Movies. Now, I don't know if you knew about this, but it is plain as day that there are sexual tones behind the Disney movie. And in fact, I'm reading from you a liberal source, okay? A liberal mainstream source. And they're even admitting it. For some of you who didn't know, now, uh, if a lot of you have children, and especially onlineers watching this, I would suggest that you would try to, uh, I'm going to try to make it as rated G as much as I can, but I want you to be careful. But when we get into the occult and something dark and satanic, you can't escape something sexual, sadly. 
That's in the perverted, wicked mind of the devil. There's a lot of sexual innuendo. Like, for example, if you look at the cover of The Little Mermaid, they had this back then in the movie, but you'll see Ursula, and then you'll see, uh, King, I think, Triton over here, and then The Little Mermaid, and then the main characters at the front. But behind them is a castle. If you look closely in that castle in the center, you will see plainly, plain as day, like a phallic thing. A phallic symbol. Well, not a symbol. It's clearly phallic, believe it or not. A lot of you are pulling up your phones right now. So you can go ahead and check it out, all right? If you check it out, you'll really understand that. So I'm reading from this liberal mainstream news source. And you're going to be shocked. And they were trying to explain it away. Some of them were saying maybe it was a disgruntled uh, Disney employee. Or, which is even more disturbing, the guy who works in Disney said this. It's not surprising, because it is kind of normal, where people who did animations will insert some kind of dirty, like a joke. Put some sexual hints or some kind of thing just as a joke. But it's not going to be normal than you think. This is way too much. There's no doubt there's too many sexual innuendos in uh, Disney. There's the oral sex joke in the Brave Little Toaster. There's also, um, this is really plain as day. In The Rescuers, there's a very brief scene in The Rescuers where a wagon cart was going by and then they were passing by a window and it was a plainly a naked nude woman. But it was so fast you couldn't catch it. That one you couldn't explain it away. So they had to admit that was really sexual. Uh, is, uh, another one is uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit. They had to admit that a lot of times her, uh, her private part was plainly revealed. So then they had to edit that and replace it where they cover her private part. That was plain as day. What I was driving at is in Disney movies, you can't just simply say that, well, people are conspiracy theorists and they're looking too much into it. Well, no, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that was very plain because uh, Jessica Rabbit's private part was plainly seen, so they had to cover it. In The Rescuers, that was plainly seen. That was definitely a nude woman at a quick moment when a carriage was going by, so they had to cover that up. To the point where the, one, the Disney manager and worker, the lead, one of the leaders there, had to say, well, that's just common. Well, then that's pretty disturbing, don't you think? Now, here are the things which uh, there's a lot more. But another example is in The Little Mermaid where the minister was uh, doing the service for the prince and then for another person. Uh, you'll notice that they'll say basically he's a little too excited and that was plainly seen, the shape. They argued back that it was just his knees, but this is just uh, one of them. You can't blame the clear instances, though, in The Rescuers and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Another example is in The Lion King when those stars were swinging and then showing some kind of uh, imagery that you'll see S-E-X all of a sudden shown while I was flying around. The Disney leader argued that it was actually S-F-X. That's how they'll cover up. But there's just way too much covering up. Another one is the genie's gay joke in Aladdin. Another one is uh, the bus driver sex joke in Hocus Pocus, which is very creepy. In the complex, I'm reading everything from the complex article. When the evil Sanderson sisters tell the bus driver that what they desire is children, he chuckled and says, it might take me a couple of tries, but I don't think that'd be a problem. Another one is uh, the toy uh, prostitute in Toy Story because of the Barbie legs and dangling hook, which was a subtle suggestion. Another one is the genie's honeymoon joke in Aladdin and the King of Thieves. And then uh, in the 101 Dalmatians, the, um, I'll just say the excited joke. But there's just way too much filth here. There's the sex joke in A Bug's Life, and then uh, the flashing in The Emperor's New Groove, the butt joke in Shrek, 
the joke about Snow White's sexual history in Shrek, and then the prostitute joke in Cat in the Hat, 2003, it's a lot of stuff. Peeping Tom joke in The Incredibles. Uh, sex joke in Robots. Uh, there's a, this is just way too much. Uh, guys, this is way, way too much. Now, some people might say you're looking too much into it and trying to find it, but the Disney leader had to admit that clearly this was a normal thing, as I mentioned to you before, that the artist will insert sexual things in there. Why would they do that? Why, would, why does Disney do that? That's very strange, especially when you have these kind of fruits. Pedophilia is unfortunately, a, that child-loving dark stuff is rampant in Disney. Okay, the evidence also is from the Associated Press News. Title of the article, Director of Disney Film About Troubled Teen is Registered Sex Offender. Here's another one from uh, NBC News. Title of the article, Two Disney World Employees Among 17 Arrested in Florida Child Sex Sting, Shara says. Another one from CNN, Theme Park Employees Caught in Sex Stings child porn arrest and yes that included the disney uh, that's talking about the disney employees another one from uh, orlando weekly massive underage sexting in florida arrest disney uh universal and sea world employees guys this is a way too much stuff another one from deadline title of the article andy mack actor stony westmoreland Fired by Disney Channel following arrest for planning liaison with 13-year-old. Now, when you look at that, then you're kind of like, okay, there's some kind of spirit going on. There's some kind of spirit going on. But it's even proven when you look at this lawyer. It's from Pumphrey Law Firm. And the person said this in the title of the article, How Operation Child Protector Speaks to the Unwavering Problem Disney Has with Sex Trafficking. And this is very disturbing. The person who majored in law or a lawyer in this official lawyer website mentioned that they did bring it up to Disney. And then Disney gave the pompous thing, yes, we take it seriously, we're going to do it. But he mentioned that what they did was, I could be interpreting this wrongly, but I, would, I want to encourage you to look at that article and source and you'll get the full story. So then they laid off that job to the hotels, basically, so that they won't take care of it. And then because the hotels, they don't do that much of a job, you know how in leadership position goes when someone's liable, they'll just say, well, you, we'll refer you to that department. And that department will say, well, we'll refer you to that department. And the other department says, well, that's not our job. See, it's that usual thing. So then in this official law website, they actually said that, so what they're saying does not really meet with their actions. Their actions is they're not really taking care of this issue. So why is that? Why won't Disney really do a good job with that one, especially with the stain reputation? Could there be a hidden agenda? Well, here are some disturbing things what Disney did. Some of you heard about the woke movement and what they're doing. And in The Hollywood Reporter, the title of the article is Disney Accused of Illegally Tracking Children Via Apps in New Lawsuit. Whoa, uh, this gets even worse when, uh, here's a video, but you can find stories on this. This, is, this ain't a secret, this is plain news. But... You heard about uh, the Disney executives where they had a Zoom call, and there was a leaked Zoom call. Here's a video from uh, Mark Dice, and obviously I'm not saying that he's a reliable source, but he does take all the news, and then he points out the actual video recordings and play it. And these Disney executives in this Zoom call actually admitted that through the uh, woke agenda, what they've successfully done is get rid of uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And what they've done instead is like replace it with friendlier terms like good morning friends or something like that. But then it gets worse where some of these executives in this Zoom call, they actually admitted, and this ain't a secret anymore, they full blown out said that uh, they revealed the 
I'm not going to say it, but let's just call it the alphabet soup agenda. Do you know what I mean by that? All right. So the le letters of the alphabet in the wrong way, okay? So the, they admitted that the al they made it clear their alphabet soup agenda. They, they don't say it's a secret or we're trying to, no, we're not trying to push it. No, they are. They said we don't have enough and we need to replace it. And they had people who specialize it, who try to work, who try to change their entire business in a way that meets up to the platform of the alphabet soup. That's what they're trying to do. And they admitted that. That ain't a secret anymore in that leaked uh, Zoom call. They admitted it. They said that there aren't enough alphabet soup characters in the movies. And even if they did have characters, one of the huge executives mentioned that and admitted that the person has ties or a family background that related to the alphabet soup. And then the person said that I'm just so shocked and surprised that even if there are characters, there aren't many lead characters that are for the alphabet, that are alphabet soup, that have the gender matching the colors of the rainbow, so to speak. Now, this ain't a secret anymore, guys. And especially with um, when you have Disney World pushing that, and then the schools, and then the theme parks, teaching and showing that to all the younger generation, little children, don't you think that's disturbing, especially with their history of the sexual scandals and everything that happened? Now, you're telling me that you're not disturbed after that. I would be very disturbed if I were you. As a matter of fact, uh, that's why there's a problem now. So uh, the Florida governor, DeSantis, try to fight against it. The title of the article from a WPLG Local 10 in their YouTube channel, title is Florida Governor Takes on Disney over its support of don't say, uh, let's just say alphabet soup bill. So the, he's charged against it where three, I think up to five year olds or up to six, they're not going to get that kind of influence or taught that kind of stuff within school platforms or in other platforms. Because why would you teach this kind of stuff? I mean, it was at a time when you didn't learn this kind of stuff until high school, and now they're jumping to how old? Okay, and especially with your history of scandals that are going on, how do we feel comfortable? It's like, let's say us Baptist pastors got so much caught in that, you feel safe and you think the news media ain't going to cry out if, let's have a Sunday school class of something, something, something that we have a history of problems with. I'd be scared if I were you. Yeah, the news media would make a riot about it. Oh, except who? Biased, wicked, brainwashed, stupid, idiotic people, man. Full of the devil, plain as day. What a biased world. If, if that was the Baptist churches, oh, they'd support what I say. But if it was, oh, no, the, our crowd, our team, so says the liberals, then they'll, then they'll switch their minds and say, and they won't agree with you. Isn't that messed up? There's something going on. And I don't like that one bit. But... If there's something going on, has there been further incidents that goes even darker? Yes, there have been further incidents that go even darker. If you study about uh, Walt Disney, it's actually some of the things are disturbing. Have you heard of MK Ultra? Now that's a real thing. That ain't a theory, okay? That's a real thing that people admit in history books. What they'll say is fictional or theoretical would be currently today that they practice this, okay? But they'll admit that the intelligence agency really did practice this. Basically, this MK Ultra thing is where they took um, participant or guinea pigs, test subjects, and then they actually brainwash the person. So they're able to brainwash the person and actually uh, fulfill their bidding. So that's pretty scary. 
Now, I don't know if you, uh, hypnotism is a real thing for some of you who didn't know that. I even, there's even psychology class that I saw at my liberal university just on hypnotism. Okay? So this ain't uh, fictional or sci-fi. This is real stuff. And the intelligence agencies, they were caught by doing that and they became infamous. So CIA became very infamous for that. But the problem is this. Walt Disney, he had dealings and connections with CIA before. That's the story. For some of you who didn't know, here's the title of the article. This is from a liberal news source, The Daily Beast. Title is, How the CIA Helped Disney Conquer Florida. Here's another one from the New York Times. Title of the article, Disney Link to the FBI and Hoover is Disclosed. This ain't a secret because even recently, this is last year, CBS News, title of the article, former CIA analyst Rodney Farron on transferring skills from CIA to Disney. Oh yeah, they, had, they shared a relationship for a long time. If you tell me Disney never had a relationship, you're bonkers, okay? With a powerful system like that, you don't think intelligence agencies don't want to take advantage of that? If you worked in the intelligence agency, of course you would use that. Why? TV is very powerful. Okay. If CIA had a bad history of this one, could Disney probably have some bad history with this one? Well, if you look at the Rolling Stone, all right, this is a mainstream source, guys, all right? A lot of it is liberal sources, too, that I'm quoting to you. So I don't want liberals to accuse me of being conspiratorial right here. I'm building up one by one the logic and the arguments here. Title of the article from Ro Rolling Stone is Stranger Things, The Secret CIA Programs That Inspired Hit Series. So I don't know if you watched this, but it was a, a hit, it's a hit show. And the Duffer, bro, uh, the Duffer brothers, they were talking about real life government programs, not fictional, real life, like MK Ultra and Stargate Project. So these brothers were unashamed and they were pointing out a lot of realistic things. And this news article admitted that. Now, because... Obviously, you can't get away with a lot of things and you'll be accused conspiratorial and it's a movie. They obviously have to mix some fiction there. But the mainstream source admitted that there are real things, real incidents in here that they're discussing. But the directors won't dare tell you which one is really true, which one is false, right? So then one of them is actually a project that carried on a part of MKUltra where children were actually involved. So then children became the test subject. And then the title, and then the project was called Project Monarch. Project Monarch. And there's a person who claimed to be a victim of that. Her name is Kathy O'Brien. Kathy O'Brien. So when I studied her, I was like, well, you know what you're going to hear. The, the mainstream world, they want to cover that up, right? They don't want to say that it's something factual that happened. Well, instead of believing what other people say, it's important that you dig up both sides, right? And I'll be very honest. At the beginning, I, I thought of her as being kind of weird, but then I, I gave a chance where I dug into her website and her interview, and it really disturbed me. There's an actual YouTube video of it. It's uh, from a channel called Montanoja, Metanoja Balkan. So I don't know, that must be a foreign channel. So otherwise, if it's English, I guess you can't get away with it, right? <laughs> Vuk Jovanovic, Mark Phillips and Kathy O'Brien, CIA's MK Ultra Mind Control Program. That's the title of the video. And when I watched it, it really disturbed me because there were people who suffered uh, PTSD, traumatic things and incidents or sexual trauma. And it disturbed me, a lot of these people were confirming what Kathy O'Brien said in the comments, saying she matched everything, a lot of them, to a T. And some of them were people who worked in uh, counseling and psychology as well, who dealt with sexual victim and patients. And they said, and when I listened to her, a lot of what she said, it's, 
it was very amazing, like all the details, the names, and the specifics. So that was the first thing that disturbed me. The second thing that disturbed me was she already uh, admitted about the intelligent agent guy who uh, helped her get free from Project Monarch. So she already gave them name, and I already gave them make, uh, the name to you, uh, Mark, uh, I forgot his last name, but I mentioned that name to you. So I'm like, okay. So unashamedly giving out the name, uh, Mark Phillips, that's right, Mark Phillips, and they have that website. And then when I was reading that website, it's trance-formation.com. And then it's what do you really know about mind control? And when I was reading that article, I'm like, you know, this person doesn't seem to be like one of these people, but a person that really knows what he or she is talking about. And then it disturbed me even more when I went to their books, all right? So one of their books is called PTSD Time to Heal on Amazon. And I'm like, okay, I, because they wrote books on this subject, it shouldn't be like this then. So then when I read it, and especially the comments, that really disturbed me. And a lot of people were saying, thank you so much. It helped me a lot getting out of my trauma or sexual trauma because of the books like this. A person wouldn't write something like that unless they experienced something really deep. In fact, one of the people wrote that, you know, actually this is too dark that I don't go that far. But I can under unless a person sexually was traumatized this really dark and deep, then I can understand why this book is good, they said. So that disturbed me. I'm not saying that uh, I easily believe what she said, but I can't easily dismiss it either after that. You know what she claimed? She claimed that those intelligence agencies, they were using Disney movies for part of MKUltra, and then she was sexualized through that. And remember, Disney had ties with those intelligence agencies. Now that should disturb you. What disturbs even more is this. What disturbs even more is if you look at popular actors and actresses who were part of what they called the Mickey Mouse Club. I don't know if you've heard about that. But in the Mickey Mouse Club, uh, here's an article from one of those Hollywood news sources, all right, straight from Hollywood news source. It's uh, from The Mirror, uh, UK. Title of the article is Mickey Mouse Club Cast Scandals, Drugs, Teen Virginity Loss, and Very Public Meltdowns. But uh, it's very interesting if you study the story of Britney Spears, how she started out that way. When she was underage, she was suddenly drinking and doing sexual stuff. And the parents had her in a clean environment. So they're like, what happened? Until she entered Mickey Mouse Club, who was here, by the way, too? Interesting. Who was contemporary in the Mickey Mouse Club? Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, Christina Aguilera, and uh, also uh, Ryan Gosling. And, you know, uh, good-looking characters, too, don't you think so? And then from a young age. Now, that's disturbing to me. I'll be very honest, that's very disturbing to me. Especially, now here's an article uh, from Vigilant Citizen, and obviously I'm not saying that this is the world's most reliable source, but I'll have to admit, when I read that article, the title of it is Something is Terribly Wrong with Britney Spears' Instagram Account. And they believe that she was victimized, that something happened with her history there that related to Hollywood. And it has ties to Disney and this kind of stuff that I discussed. And it shows a lot of interesting things that her actions, her Instagram posts, a lot of it matches with uh, sexual tra traumatized victims or people who had a sexual traumatic history or even MK Ultra history, some of those victims. It matched pretty well. A lot of it, uh, you remember that time when she shaved off her hair? They say that uh, MK Ultra victims, that that was very important. That was something that was tied sexually. So I see something as very, very dark here, especially when she dresses up and take Instagram shots of Alice in Wonderland and stuff like that. When you have that kind of Disney background and uh, history, 
it makes me think twice. It makes me pretty disturbed. So that's what you see everything with the sexual innuendo. Hmm. Now, we're going to go to witchcraft or occult. So I'm going to use them uh, interchangeably, witchcraft, occult, Satanism. I know there are distinctions if you want to be technical, but you know what? To be very honest, they're all the same. They're all tied to Satan worship, okay? It doesn't matter, all right? Magic, magic, they believe in the magic and the spiritual realm, and they tie it to Lucifer or Satan. I see that all as the same. Now, I'm building up stuff with Disney, okay? And then I'm going to show you how this is going to match, all right? So bear with me still. There is no doubt, so let's start from the top again. Like I, there is no doubt, okay, that Disney has sexual tones. I proved that much, okay? We can agree with that, right? There is something sexually dark. We can all agree with that, even liberals, okay? All the other specifics, we can say maybe it happened, maybe it didn't happen, but we can admit that there is something sexually dark. That's undoubtable. Okay, even liberal sources will admit it. You can even type down sexual dark stuff with Disney or dark history of Dis Disney and they'll admit it. Okay, now with witchcraft, that is definitely plain as day as well. You might say, really? Yeah, because they admitted right here in the article, this is a Disney Wiki website, all Disney Wiki website. And you know what they said? That magic is one of the most essential elements. It's the main theme throughout Disney movies. In fact, uh, that's no doubt. And here are the lists that they give, all right? And let's see if you have a clean conscience after that. And remember those Disney classics and say if I'm wrong. They say there's witchcraft, wizardry, and sorcery. There's shamanism. There is voodoo. There is dragon magic, they call it. Satan is the dragon, right? Fairy magic, genie magic. I think uh, genie, that was another word for devil or demon or something like that. Yeah, I don't know if you knew that, all right? There's also the little gods magic. Sons of God, summoning magic, elemental magic, alchemy, necromancy. Wait, what did the Bible say about necromancy? About necromancers? As guardian magic, eldritch magic, dark dimension magic, chi magic, chaos magic, sun magic, divination. What did the Bible say about divination? Mana magic. Oh, guys, there's just way too much. I can't read all this. Gift magic, and they'll give every single list. There is no doubt witchcraft is all over Disney. All right? And I'm reading from a Disney Wiki fandom site, okay? In fact, there's an ex... The title of this article from InsideTheMagic.com, there's an ex... The title of the article, Ex-Witch Warns Parents of Disney's New Show, Be Careful. Because I don't know if you heard about Disney's new show coming out about witches. So an ex-witch is warning about that. Now... They're pushing that in. Wait a minute. Just like this. They were, they had a history of this, and now they're pushing it in on how many year olds? They have a history of this, and now they're pushing this on how many year olds? You just have to wait till you get past the 60s and 50s because it's just too conservative. And there were morals in Hollywood that time that actors, if they were a couple, were in separate beds. Now it's so you just have to wait for the right time. Now, I'd say that's very disturbing, and I'd be disturbed if I were you. Now, there are uh, rumors that Walt Disney did have ties to witchcraft. They say this, so this is not proof, okay? All right, this is not proof, okay? You got that, all right? So I'm just giving some kind of info. You got that? All right, stupid AI. Sometimes they don't understand, all right? So if you want to, okay. So let me just say this, okay? I'll put a disclaimer. This is fake news, okay? So fake news is this, all right? So 
Walt Disney, apparently when he created his character Mickey Mouse, that it was his spirit friend or spirit guide. And so because of that, that's how Mickey Mouse was born. Now, I, uh, there is no evidence of that, but there is no doubt evidence that within witchcraft, there is a lot they use the mouse. In spells especially, you never thought of that? Here's uh, one from, uh, from the Miller's Guild. And Miller's Guild, they, they're in Seattle, Washington, very liberal place. And then Miller's Guild, they specialize in spiritualism. So they said this, 12 spiritual meanings of mouse. Mouse symbolism, that's the title of their article. And if you look at it, you know what mouse symbolizes? The mouse, what it strangely symbolizes is fertility, sexual. Why? Because, you know, it's fertility rate. For some of you who didn't know that. Could there be a, now, uh, I wonder. Philippines have that too, huh? Or some, did I hear that? I don't know if that's true or not. But we have a bunch of different nationalities here, so they might admit it. But, oh, they eat them. Yeah, they eat them. All right, they eat them. That'd be better, you know, just eat and get over with, right? But, they, you, but here's another meaning. This is even darker. A spiritual meaning of the mouse is because it goes underground. Its spiritual meaning is that it goes down to the underworld. Where the devil is, right? It's your communication, your transport to the underworld. Now that, I'm seeing something strange here. That's pretty disturbing. And this is even from an official witchcraft site. This is from uh, the website Museum of Witchcraft and uh, Magic. Okay, Museum of Witchcraft and Magic, uh, UK. And in their museum, they have uh, one of their uh, specimens or items, 305 mouse, all right? And when they titled, uh, you know what they put the information on that mouse, these witches in their museum? It's disturbing. Poor little Mick Mouse. Done to death in a nasty old jar. Well, this is real West Country stuff. In this case, a mouse is caught befriended and fed for a while. Then death is induced and the death house jar is placed in the barn or store suffering from the inroads of a plague of mice. What then happens is that the dead mouse's spirit has words with its kith and kin laying havoc in the barn. And one presumed that it says, look here, you chaps, enough is enough. Push off and nibble someplace else over and out. Simple as that. The strange thing is that it does work. And what is more so long as Mickey's jar remains in the barn, they do not come back no matter how tempting the stock held in store. That's information specifically listed on this item in their witchcraft museum, 305-mouse. Why would they use Mickey Mouse? Isn't that disturbing? By the way, isn't this interesting? This is even in scientific papers. Didn't you know that? Spiritualism connecting to Mickey Mouse? All you have to do is type it. It's called the Mickey Mouse problem. That's a real thing, guys. That's a real thing. They put that name tied to spiritualism. Uh, this is from the uh, NIH.gov, all right? Their website. The title of their article that they posted, The Mickey Mouse Problem, Distinguishing Religious and Fictional Counterintuitive Agents. What is that about? The Mickey Mouse Problem refers to the difficulty in predicting which supernatural agents are capable of eliciting belief and religious devotion. They use that term as a real thing, guys. Man, isn't that disturbing right there? There's just way too much stuff over here. Especially when they found out, there's no doubt, think about this. Could there have been a mouse like this as spirit animals, Mickey Mouse? Yes, because evidence is from the BBC News. Title of the article is 700-year-old painting 
looks like Mickey Mouse. It was found at, I think, some kind of Catholic church or something, and they dug and they found out, and it really looks like Mickey Mouse, guys, the shape. Or it really looks like that. And that was disturbing. That was amongst a bunch of different spirit animals and mythical creatures they put it with. I think after that, all right, I cannot say Walt Disney deliberately built a devil, okay? But there is no doubt that this uh, picture, this image of Mickey Mouse, it is a witch occultic symbol. There is absolutely no doubt about that. It is part of a spirit animal, spirit guide system. That even scientists use that term as a label now. Okay, how about that, right? You, you look, type down 700-year-old Mickey Mouse and you'll see it, okay? And then you'll be surprised. Then things start to make some sense when you dig up Walt Disney life. This is from the De demolay.org, D-E-M-O-L-A-Y. Who are they? They're a branch of Masons. They are a particular branch from Mason, Masons. They'll say Disney is not a Mason himself, but he was connected to one of their, lower, uh, one of their branches, and that's the De Molay organization, one of their Masonic branches. In fact, they said this. Did you know that Mickey... This is from the De Molay uh, Masonic website. Did you know that Mickey Mouse was a De Molay? Well, in truth, Walt Disney was a member of De Molay. How about that? He was the 107th member of Mother Chapter and joined in March of 1920. As a matter of fact, Dis Disney even said that a lot of what he built in Disney and everything he produced is thanks to what he learned from their teachings. Those Masonic teachings. And remember, he's not directly a Mason, guys. He's just a part of that branch, carried on a teaching of that branch, and etc. Okay? But it becomes more disturbing when you look at uh, DisneylandClub33.com. DisneylandClub33.com. That's an official website where a site dedicated to the most exclusive location in the resort. And you know what they mentioned right here? This is interesting what they said in their official website when they studied this. They said that 33 could be tied because of 33rd degree masonry. Who knows, maybe he might say that publicly, I'm not a Mason, but who knows behind the scene, maybe, because he's such a high up guy in CIA and FBI Hoover was high in Masonry that you can't say that he wasn't a 33rd degree Mason himself, Disney. Something to think about, all right? But remember, there's no evidence for that. Just some thoughts to consider. Here's something even more disturbing. They said this. The number 13 was important to Walt. Perhaps for its relationship to the Freemasons, or, be, or perhaps because the 13th letter of the alphabet is Mickey, M, M, Mickey, Mouse, M, another M. Because of M. Wow. But it's even more disturbing. If you go to that website... If you look inside their club, there's way too much Masonic symbolism there. And then for me to say, well, he's plainly not a Mason, when you see all of that, I'm at least open to this needs delving further. I'm not saying he is, but this bears worth repeating where you have to delve into, uh, you have to see that there is a good chance of that and got to investigate it. The pillars of Jachin and Boaz could be defined via the tile design, they said. Another one, could these lovely windows hold a clue? The enlightened guest will know, and it looks like an eye. Like, kind of like the all-seeing eye in the back of the dollar bill or something. All right. Do you know how powerful Disney is? This is from the Insider Magazine. 14 companies you didn't realize Disney owns. Think about this. How are you going to brainwash the next generation? It's definitely through TV. Everyone knows that. Even Facebook got lashed from that because of that addiction, that influence. It does that. All it takes is some government agent, I'd like to make a deal with you, Disney. 
You can help us. You're not going to go to Disney, who's one of the most powerful organizations? Of course you would. And this is disturbing. You know who, uh, who Disney owns? ESPN, ABC, Lifetime, The History Channel, A&E, FX, Marvel Studios, Lucasfilm, where Star Wars comes from, and 21st Century Fox, as well as, I, uh, they said right here, uh, GoPro as well, and uh, Hulu. Now, when you see, that's a lot of power. All it takes is one being who is the ruler of the kingdoms of this world, and if there is one channel he liked to use, especially if very young people are watching, you, don't th you think he's going to leave Disney alone? He's going to say, I'm not going to use them. You've you got to be naive to think that. If, 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 the, if you are the devil and the devil wants to use TV to brainwash a generation, especially next generation, think of one channel that's best that you're going to use. Disney. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Disney's the best candidate. Now, I'm going to show you this side, okay? Guess what? Disney is, uh, for now, let's just say this is an innocent stage. They're not blatantly saying, hey, let's do witchcraft, and then uh, let's endorse pedophilia and doing stuff like that. That ain't full blown. Okay, yet. All right, but, all right, but, I'm going to show you why it will, okay? Why? First of all, go to the book of Samuel. Now let's look at scripture. There is no doubt in Satan worship, there was too much sexual things going on. Oh, and by the way, you're going to find something very interesting right here. The Bible says right here in verse 4, Then said they, What shall be the trespass offering which we shall return to him? These pagan Philistines who are... Very good in building up idols. What did they build? They answered five golden rod. What? Emeralds. You know what that is? That's the sexual part of the body. And five golden what? Mice. Strange. Isn't that strange? There's a satanic spirit behind that. Don't you think so? Don't tell me there's no satanic spirit behind that. Uh, let me show you more. Go to the book of Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel 8, Ezekiel 8, and Leviticus 11, Ezekiel 8, and Leviticus 11. There is absolutely no doubt that during the pagan days of the Old Testament that people were connecting idolatry with sex. That is matter-of-fact history. No one denies that, all right? There has to be sexual imagery, something sexual within Satan worship. So then they'll put sexual imagery, sectional, sectional uh, excuse me, sectional, sexual imagery, sexual, uh, they don't have TV back then, but pics, the Bible calls it image though. And TV today in Disney is called image. And oops, we accidentally put a sexual, what, slip up in there? How about that? So notice that this is Satan worship when they did that. I'm not saying Disney is doing Satan worship, but I want you to see that they're repeating the same pattern. All right? They're repeating the same pattern. These guys are just saying, I'm worshiping Satan, basically, or pagan. But these guys, they're just saying, this is children's stuff. Okay? So then I'll show you the bridge later. Okay? Now, go to Leviticus 11. This is interesting what the Bible says. In Leviticus Chapter 11, there's an abominable creature that the Lord didn't want you to try. If you look at Leviticus chapter 11 and verse, uh, let's see right here, uh, verse, uh, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, 20, what's that? 29. Thank you, 29, okay? Yes, he got it. 29. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the what? Mouse. mouse. Okay, why is that important? The mouse in the Bible is called a creeping thing. Now look at Romans 1. You know what the Bible says currently 
in the church age what people are worshiping? Romans 1. Look at Romans 1. Romans 1. The mouse is considered anything of that creepeth, right? That the Bible says it's an abomination. Look at Romans 1. The Bible says, and verse 23, verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and what? Creeping things. Oh, I'm Mickey. <laughs> made an image. God says that they were worshiping, that they're worshiping creeping things. That includes a mouse. Go to Ezekiel 8. Ezekiel 8. Now, I can't prove and say that they're worshiping Mickey Mouse and they're building a tunnel and they're offering incense and sacrifice. Oh, great Mickey. Oh, spirit one. I'm not saying that, but there is no doubt some kind of spirit behind the scenes that Disney is sharing with what the Satanists did back in the Old Testament. All right, look at Ezekiel 8. Isn't this, isn't this weird what the Bible says what the children of Israel did? In Ezekiel chapter 8, notice that the Word of God reads right here at verse, uh, let's see, we're going to look at verse, uh, it's, I didn't write these verses down, so thank you, 9 and 10 sounds good. Yes, thank you. Verse 9, uh, this is why you need people who know the Bible, right? Then they'll know, right? You need people who connect those dots so that they can help you out. Amen. <laughs> In verse 9, and he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Abomination, right? Remember, creeping thing, the mouse is an abomination, right? Verse 10, so I went in and saw and behold every form of what? Creeping things and abominable beasts and what? All the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about, including a mouse. They did that back then. They worshiped disgusting creatures like mice. Believe it or not. Now, if that's disturbing, go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. We'll come back here later in Isaiah chapter 66. I'm going to close it off right here, something interesting. Now, there's no doubt that there are sexual tones and there's witchcraft. Can we agree with that back then in the Old Testament? All right, there was Satan worship, and what I mean by Satan worship is worshiping the idols, the pagan images, and stuff like that. And they combined it with sexual things, sexual tones, and that, in, and that included the mouse as well. That included the mouse as well. All right, this is what they did back then, and plainly they admitted we worship Satan. Now, they might not say that verbally, word for word, but basically we worship a spirit, all right, or these devils are behind the images, okay? Now, these guys won't say that, okay? They'll say this is innocent for children. Think about this. There is one thing that can get them together to worship the Antichrist. All right, think about this. Go to Revelation 13. Your hand is Isaiah 66. We're going to go back there because I'm going to show you the bomb at Isaiah 66 later. But I want you to go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Now, let's, uh, let's make this logical. Can we agree that uh, the Disney executives, those in uh, Disneyland, Disney World, or wherever, that if they do follow the Antichrist system, that they will all worship him? Yes, okay, you have to worship Satan. You have to worship the Antichrist. We believe that because it's scripture, that they will do that one day. They have to. But here's the thing. The question is, how do you get them to do that? All right, now go to Revelation 13. The Bible says at verse 4, And they worship the dragon, see, Satan, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast. See that? They worship the Antichrist. Look at the last part of verse 3. And all the Disney world, excuse me, and all the world wondered after the beast. See that? That was a slip up, okay? But there was a... Notice that all the world here, 
They worship the Antichrist. And yes, we'll have to include those Disney people if they're going to be left behind and they're going to worship the Antichrist system. How do you get them to do that? You cannot believe it. It's going on right now. And as a matter of fact, it is not the globalists and it is not uh, certain elites. It can't be Gates, Fauci, or etc. It is you. You are the one that's going to bridge it. What do I mean by that, Pastor? The church. You might say, why? Here's an article from, uh, this is from the Southeastern Baptist uh, Seminary. The title of their article, all right, from their seminary, from their school, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, I believe that's it, in their section Between the Times. Title of their article, A Curmudgeon Weighs In on Evangelical Worship, Part 3. The, the subtitle, Disney World Worship. You know what they mean by that, Disney World Worship? Because they said the church is no longer a church. It is entertainment. It is Disneyland worship. Isn't that genius? You know who's bringing in the Antichrist kingdom? Rick Warren, Joel Osteen, Steve Furtick. Some people are getting upset and they're, they're right now uh, going away online. Hey guys, that's the truth. You know who's bridging that gap? You can't have evil people doing that. You need a spiritual person to bring that. We're worshiping Christ, Jesus Christ. Then that Antichrist comes out, I'm Jesus Christ. Why? Because we're losing younger people, three-year-old, five-year-olds, and the next generation in church because church is too grown adult, boring for them. Let's meet up to their level and entertain them. Isn't that interesting right there, huh? Isn't that interesting? That's pretty disturbing. Wow. So they did that back then. So then you get the church to bridge this. All you have to do is this. It, cannot, it doesn't have to be Disneyland itself, but it is big enough. If you're going to receive worship as the Antichrist, you need a big parking lot. You need a big church service. And then if you want them to worship you, before we go inside, say your Pledge of Allegiance inside the theme park. And then let's see that mark. That way we can give you access to go in. Let's have fun while we worship the Lord. And by the way, they had Christian musicians in Disney World singing for them before too annually you didn't know that oh you're just a uh, uh, uh. title of the article from wired magazine disney's one dollar billion bet on a magical wristband close to uh, uh, uh why because when they scan it then your services and needs are met just like a church your service and need is met what can we do what can we help you hey there's a uh, and it looks like a bar and then ushers look like uh, skimpy dressed waitresses. And they come down and they meet the needs. That's what churches are doing. And they're that bridge. Wow. The I told you that's the big thing. The wallet's on the magic band too. The wall? The wallet. You can oh. keep your money. Oh, you can keep your money. You can keep your money in that uh, wristband for some of you who didn't know. And it's tied so, to your identity. What's that? It's it's tied to your identity, like he said. See, it's tied to your identity. So then how many uh, points or how much money you got or what reward system you can get. Guys, guys, that's why the devil, he can get the next generation. Now, isn't this interesting? Let's close it here and then good night to y'all. All right, not bad for time. All right, Isaiah 66. Now, for some of you who didn't know, you do know this, that back then... Groves were condemned in Scripture, right? For some of you who didn't know, groves were condemned. Parks, basically parks were condemned. I'll stop connecting dots, you Bible believers. Oh, my goodness. Parks condemned. Why? Because a lot of it had to do with something sexual. 
such as uh, underground tunnels going on, came chaos, the Mickey Mouse, stuff like the, the victims coming out of there, in the parks underground. <laughs> Everything I said was fake news. Okay, so when you, uh, when you, in the Bible, this was condemned because they did a lot of sexual thing and worship, witchcraft worship. Celtic Druids, they, had a, they held, held a spiritual bond with that, with the trees, with the groves. Uh, I don't know about the groves exactly, but the nature, certain trees. Okay, then. You know what's going to happen at the tribulation? This is the tribulation. When God comes down at verse 15, he judges the world. He rebukes them with fire. But look what he says at verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. What are they doing? That, if you study pagan history, the idolatry, they find that sacred cleansing with uh, tree worship, park worship, grove worship, but there's also sexual stuff going on too. There's a history of that. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the what? Mouse <laughs> shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. There's a mouse connected to that. Isn't that, isn't that disturbing? Why would the Bible, out of all creeping things, use your head guys, out of all creeping things, why would God mention a mouse here? thought could it be oh, would come out in a park of trees and maybe just maybe the antichrist who might be disney <laughs> right that go i'm gonna get down to that one you're right and that that he could receive worship that way and for some of you who didn't know there are two things i like to close with which is very disturbing. Uh, look up Mickey. Uh, you can look it up. Look at Mickey, and then when it's reflected on the water, it's wicked. Another thing, if you look at Walt Disney's signature, which it has to come out, dee, 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 stuff like that. If you look at Walt Disney's signature, you can see 666, six, six, and I could be wrong about this, but I see a backward six as well. All right, but I could be wrong about that. All right, you go home and pray about that for a while. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, I pray that tonight's teachings have been eye-opening, made us aware how evil the system is, how they're trying to get the next generation, and that we ought to be careful, and we are not ignorant of his devices, and that we rescue the next generation, Lord. This uh, movie, I mean, this uh, video that I'm posting is not about bashing people who go to Disneyland or buy Disney items or watch Disney movies, but it is at least showing that there should be a wariness, Lord. There should be a wariness and a caution of what the devil's trying to condition our children so that we can condition them back, Lord, to the spiritual purposes, so that we can make them see and make them not follow into, into the trap of that system. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.